Hello, Penguinauts! I'm the Betty Penguin, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance! If you remember in the last episode, we sent Reclaimer home from Demise, but Odyssey, here around the wasteland, has still got about 100 days until its transfer window to head home. Turns out that uh, Reclaimer and Odyssey are actually going to arrive back at Solitude within about 20 days of each other, which is actually pretty cute, considering how far apart they were launched and uh, just how different in length their missions have been. I think it's... Uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of uh, poetic that they're both arriving home at the same time, sort of bringing an end to this first phase, I, I guess, of our career mode. Uh, well, second phase, really. I say this is like the early interplanetary stage. We've done our, our first few missions to uh, other bodies, and they're finally coming to a close. So now we can launch far more sophisticated missions using the lessons learned from those uh, and all of the wonderful science that they have brought back, allowing us to unlock a number of very cool new technologies. I believe at the end of this episode, or maybe at the end of uh, the next one, we actually unlock a new type of nuclear engine, which is about twice as powerful and almost twice as efficient. So, uh, yeah, we are <laughs> unlocking some uh, pretty powerful stuff. And I'm thinking our next target is going to be a pretty big uh, mission to Reaper, to explore all the various different moons and drop some atmospheric probes. That's going to be a long round trip, though. So I'm thinking we might use uh, Deep Freeze, which is a mod that we have installed, which allows you to cryonically freeze your Kerbals, stopping them... Uh, using any life support so since that would be I think around a six seven year round trip uh, easily I think we might actually need to do that um, since we're going to want a large crew because we need an SSTO and probably have multiple science labs but uh, that's something for a future episode and just before we head back to solitude we're heading to the moon of the wasteland malice because we haven't got uh, a number of science reports from the space around it. So, we have lots of reports to grab, some of which we've already transmitted using Tribute 1, but uh, we'll grab them so we can recover them and get more science from them. Ah, uh, that's an annoying bug. We have to <laughs> get the crew report like this. The moon is grey and similar in colour to Nemesis, however you feel it will be less hostile. Let's get a temperature scan. The folks in the lab will be thrilled to know space is still cold, even this close to Archangel. Instrument read zero, it's as if it were in a vacuum. Mystery goo observation? Mr. Goo turns a pale green and then back to a light grey. It's acting funny in these parts. Gravity scan. The Graviolia are terrified. Analyze magnetosphere. This moon has no magnetic activity this high up or the instrument is out of action. And finally, material study. High radiation environment. Yeah, we've seen that one before. There we go. Uh, we're just going to... Which one has all the... Yeah, it's this one. Okay, cool. Collect all. Uh, we'll clean the experiments like so. Um, we just have to get out to do the... Oh, hello, we're in space near now. Okay, well, we're going to be putting ourselves into a uh, elliptical orbit so we can get back up to the uh, higher biomes. Right, uh, we've got three minutes until our burn, so let's keep taking reports. Shall we? Cr ah, lame. <laughs> we don't have uh, reports for every situation. The thermometer seems to be overly warm and the light from Archangel hits it. That's not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> Things tend to heat up when uh, the giant... Well, a red giant, you know, <laughs> uh, shines its light on it. Goo just finished a sandwich, to be more exact, your sandwich. Goo is alive, apparently. <laughs> you scan for gamma radiation, gravity scan. The gravioli start trying to tunnel out of the detector. Waving the magnetometer around yields less of a result than applying it directly to the head. And material study. Ah, we haven't got a report for that. We usually don't have a report for material studies, uh, not going to lie. We'll get Katrina out. There we go. You've recorded your observations about the situation. Cool. Let's collect all of those. Uh, oh, I need to collect them into the box, don't I? Yes, I do. Let's stick this back into orbital view. This is quite irritating. There we go. And we'll clean out those experiments again. So we don't have to get up and clean them manually. Grab really start trying to tunnel out again. Oh, yeah, we've got the different biomes that we need to grab all of these from. There we go. Glorious. Now I think people have sort of recorded um, even more of these science reports, but it takes a lot of time to actually put them in. Um, and the, for some reason we can't collect that gravity scan out of there. There we go. But yeah, it takes a lot of time to put them in, and what with crowdsource science not actually getting updated, um, how long is this burn actually going to take? 57 seconds, okay. Uh, oh, hello, we've got another gravity scan. Cool, let's grab that. 
and collect all. Cool. Okay, so that's time up a little bit. But yeah, with the Crystal Science not even getting updated, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know <laughs> if it's even worth continuing to do it. Um, yeah, as I said, because it does take so long. And if I do update the game into a later version, then I might not be able to keep the science reports. And also, the science reports, they don't work that well with um, with Aftercurb. And like the default reports, as you see, like we should have default reports to actually fill in the gaps where we haven't got biome and planet-specific reports here. Um, but they none of them have worked, and I don't know why. I've tried reinstalling the mod multiple times, um, but it just doesn't work. Uh, and I've tried even loading up the game, you know, without all of my reports put in, without, you know, completely unedited, uh, and it, it just doesn't work. Uh, and I don't know why. Hello, we waited far too long to start our burn, because I was talking. Uh, <laughs> silly me. Should have started it, yeah, I was too busy taking science reports. And talking about custom science reports. But there we go. Let's just... That, there we go. Kind of irritated we had to use as much RCS just then as we did. How much have we got left? Oh, not very much. Not very much at all. A hundred. Less than 10% left, so yeah, we really do have to be frugal and only use it when absolutely necessary. I'm actually just going to turn the RCS off for now. We do have reaction wheels, so this should be able to keep us on target. I think we should get a world... No, no, we won't get a world first, actually. Um... Not for getting into uh, orbit of, uh, of mass. There we go. We have. Yeah, because of course Tribute 1's already got into orbit. But we should have got one for doing our first spacewalk around Malice. I don't know why we haven't got that. Maybe because we're not in orbit yet. I don't know. But there we are. Beautiful. Okay. Let's. Uh, I'm more power a little bit. Skimming over the rings, getting beautiful shots here. I'm not going to be OCD about uh, <laughs> getting multiple reports now. Um, you know, one for the lab, one for uh, transmitting or recovering back home. Because really, especially with only one scientist working, we're not going to be able to get through all of the data we even have on the spaceship right now. Um, so I'm really not too bothered about it uh, right now. We still have a crap ton of, of duplicate reports. Um, to feed into the lab. As you stare off into space, you notice that there is a piece of odd-looking space junk following you. Ooh, creepy. Um, but yeah, as I said, um, <laughs> I'm not going to really be too OCD about it anymore. Why can't we take a gravity scan? That is a question. Log gravity data. There we go. Gravity data terrified. Boosh! We got it. Cool. Maybe it's just because all the <laughs> scientific experiments are still transferring. Just look at all the messages we get just moving this many science reports. Uh, yeah, <laughs> around this, this spaceship. A fair few. So we're going to get a fairly beautiful shot here of skimming out into high orbit of Malice and out into the rings of the wasteland. It is a truly beautiful shot here, just passing through those rings. Ringed planets are so cool, I have no idea why they aren't in the stock game. They really should be. Same with most of the visual mods, actually. I'm really not entirely sure what direction Kerbal Space Program is going in. There are so many like must-have things that everyone just installs mod-wise. Um, you know, you'd think that they'd have visual enhancements as at least a graphics option by this point, but you know, what do I know? I'm only a lowly KSP YouTuber. So here we've swapped back to Phaethon, if you remember, it's our asteroid redirect mission which we're sending out to the wasteland. And we need to do a fairly hefty inclination change here so that we can actually efficiently burn out to the wasteland. I, I tried a few different things, but by far the most efficient way of getting out to the wasteland was just to change our inclination into a relatively equatorial orbit uh, and then adjusting our orbit from there when our transfer window rolls around. But before we can send Phaethon out to the wasteland, we have a a little bit more to do around Reaper. You see uh, Echo here has got an encounter with Tilos, the new name for Tylo, and it has changed a fair bit. Uh, if you'll notice we moved our orbit up um, quite a bit in the last episode so we didn't have to uh, keep having encounters with Arado since it sort of dominates the um, 
inner part of the Reaper system. It's it's really hard to wait for an intercept with Tilos without having multiple intercepts with Arados throwing us into uh, either out of the system or into uh, Reaper itself. So we are running on fumes here, but we have just enough to get ourselves into a stable orbit. I don't really want to leave Echo in an orbit of Reaper because there's the chance that it will get an encounter with something uh, while we leave it there and then it will get flung out of the system or into Reaper and it could be useful in future um, as some kind of relay, I don't know. We've got a space probe out here, there's no point throwing it away uh, so we might as well try and keep it safe. So see here, just time warping until we actually get to a point where we can ping a signal, I believe off of uh, memory which is our uh, Eltos probe which we'll be swapping to and uh, going on adventures with, I believe, in the next episode. Uh, but we're also grabbing ourselves all of our science reports from near space and then uh, just time warping up and getting science reports from space high above Tilos. Tilos has got a lot of biomes, actually. I think it's got the most biomes out of any of the moons of Reaper, which is, you know, typical, because it's the most difficult one to land on, so of course it's going to have the most bloody biomes. Um, but yeah, it's got some interesting biomes as well. And if you'll notice here, we stop over a biome called Bop Impact. You'll notice a number of craters across the surface, and now we finally know the fate of the fifth and final moon of Jewel. It appears it broke into pieces at some point over the last four billion years, and the various different fragments smashed into Tilos, increasing its gravity even more. So now it has a surface gravity of 0.85 Gs. Not as bad as Demise, so we can probably reuse Monument Lander or a variation thereof. And you'll see there, just going to the tech tree, we have now researched off-world launching platforms. So we can now actually build rockets on other worlds. So after we've got our, uh, these missions done and out of the way, we are going to begin working on our Nemesis colony, which should be rather exciting. But here we're launching uh, another spacecraft just before our transfer window to the wasteland. As I mentioned briefly in the last episode, I do want to do a bit of resource prospecting around the wasteland. This probe cost barely anything to launch. I thought, hey, we're not gonna get another transfer window for a while, and we might wanna send a mission to uh, create some kind of colony at that point. So I want to know what kind of resources we'll have to play with when we get there. So this is Tribute 2, I believe. Uh, the first probe that we sent to the Wasteland was Tribute 1, so it's kind of appropriate. And we're using a bit of an interesting uh, launch vehicle here. Uh, this is a new engine we've just got access to. It's very similar to the... Um Merlin engine used by SpaceX uh, in the sense it's very very cheap uh, its performance is pretty damn good actually it's better than a skipper engine uh, and it's also very very efficient but it is also extremely extremely cheap um, we do however need to use cryogenic fuel tanks for its fuel it doesn't run on liquid fuel it runs on uh, liquid oxygen um, and liquid uh, hydrogen it can also run on liquid methane and liquid uh, oxygen as well that's a little bit less efficient that's more to do with extracting resources on the surfaces of other bodies but uh, yeah and the space probe itself is using ion propulsion I I don't know why I haven't used ion propulsion up to this point considering how overpowered solar power is in uh, in after Kerbin. and you see here I actually retract all the gigantic power arrays and we have enough power for these ion engines just with those two tiny solar panels so we really didn't even need all the extra weight of the gigantors but yeah these ion engines mean that we have well first of all a much much lighter probe than if we use nuclear engines and also we have a hell of a lot more delta v i think we have about 12 kilometers per second of delta v so yeah we're going to be able to um do quite a lot of expensive maneuvers um, we should be able to get a pretty good resource scan of the wasteland and also of malice and you'll notice um well not anymore because we've swapped away but we did also have some uh, relays on there so we should be able to set up a kind of relay network around the wasteland as well so we're trying to um, make sure we have communications at all times in that system um it's not going to be perfect but you know it'll be better than nothing uh, since the communications in that uh, part of the solar system is still a little bit spotty and sort of rely on uh, line of sight to solitude. But here we are also sending Phaethon out to the wasteland as well. So two space probes out uh, in the same transfer window. This isn't the most efficient burn. Obviously we're nowhere near uh, our periapsis here, but that's just the way the orbit was aligned. That's just how it goes with uh, <laughs> rendezvousing with asteroids really. Uh, it would have been far, far less efficient to reduce the periapsis down uh, and then burn at periapsis. It was just much, much more efficient to just burn um, where we are right now. We managed to get ourselves an encounter, an encounter that's actually um, a periapsis that's inside the planet. So we'll have to adjust our orbit so we don't smash into the wasteland uh, at some point before. 
we actually enter into orbit. However, we are swapping back here to Memento. You guys remember this one? This is a space probe that's heading out to Drizzen. It is a sample return mission. So uh, you see there, it's actually not going to transmit science, but it is in fact going to take surface samples with those surface sample drills and return them to the main orbiter, which will then head on a high energy trajectory back to solitude uh, when it has a heat shield and a small science container. So only a tiny, tiny part of the space probe is actually going to make it back to solitude. But we are going to actually be able to recover all of those. Now, I don't think I've ever done this before. When I launch a space probe, I know almost... I think every time I've ever sent a space probe anywhere in KSP has always been transmitting the science and then the manned mission brings them back. I've never done a probe sample return. It's just because... It's Drizzen is just so hard to get to and it takes such a long time to go to and it's really not that interesting Like by that point we might as well just send a manned mission out to Reaper where we're gonna get a hell of a lot more science um, So it makes far more sense just to send a probe mission a more sophisticated probe mission than usual Yes, but uh, yeah, it's really not worth sending a manned mission to Drizzen uh, Especially with how long it takes uh, to wait for each transfer window as well. Yeah, it just would not be particularly viable um, So I think this is sort of the next best thing so now we're rolling around near the end of the episode, and just before I leave you, Odyssey is heading home. Yes, finally. So after exploring the wasteland, finding the ruins of the KSC, and uh, doing a great deal of wonderful science, they are going to be heading home. And we did actually cut it quite fine. They're actually going to run out of life support about 20 days after they get back. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I think I'll give a little bit more margin for error next time. I did do my calculations and figure out the time between transfer windows and figured out, yeah, no, they'll have, they should have um, just enough life support. I didn't realize it would be 20 days worth of wiggle room there. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, a little bit close for comfort, but they're going to be absolutely fine. They should be back in the next few episodes alongside Reclaimer. So we should get a uh, pretty huge uh, amount of science and also funds. We're completing about 75% of all of our contracts. We've had a bunch of contracts running for absolutely ages, uh, which is why we haven't actually picked up any new contracts in so long, because these missions are so long term. But uh, thank you for watching everyone. It's been a bit of a shorter episode, but I do hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.